Hey, what's up everyone? This is MindBlank. Welcome back to my channel and I have a small update on the whole RX Vega Morpheus 2 heatsink switch. It has been a really busy and hectic week for me, but I did get a chance to play around with fan profiles on the Morpheus since the 4-pin mini PWM to regular PWM cable has arrived. We'll get to that in a moment, but first I want to share an issue I had with the PCIe power on my Vega card. I encountered a problem with frequent reboots when running higher overclocks and even at stock during heavy power spikes. Essentially I could never complete a run of superposition for example and I had reboots even with vsync on and non GPU demanding games. But before you guys assume I used a single 8 pin cable with a Y splitter instead of two distinct power lines from the PSU to power my RX Vega card, well that's just not the case. I'm running two separate PCIe connectors from my Bitfenix Whisper M 650W PSU. Thing is that this PSU is a multi-rail design. It's not the most common PSU electrical layout, but this channel well technologies based PSU is a proper multi-rail implementation where we've got rail 12V1 for the motherboard and peripherals, 12V2 for the CPU, 12V3 for VGA1 and 12V4 for VGA2. The idea is that neither of these two VGA rails were able, on their own, to supply the instantaneous peak power draw that the RX Vega even at stock sometimes needed. How I came to know this? Well, I was playing Divinity Original Sin 2 capped at 80 FPS at 2560x1080, which is far from the most GPU demanding game ever and I got a reboot when a few barrels exploded in one scene. Anyway, the fix for this was easy, but I want to share it with you since it will help out those that run into issues with any power hungry card and a multi-rail PSU. I simply plugged in one PCIe connector into a VGA1 out and the other into the VGA2 out. This way the card is supplied all the time, even during peaks with no issues. Superposition became 100% stable even when overclocked and I had zero reboots. Make sure to keep this in mind if you're running a multi-rail PSU that isn't rated for more than, I don't know, 750 to 800 watts total power or 35 to 40 amps per VGA rail, which should not exhibit this problem normally. Okay, so the PWM adapter came in and I installed it and naturally I get a much finer level of control over the fans than I ever did when controlling them directly with the motherboard. At the default 2400 RPM setting the Vega UEFI has for its blower turbine under load, so around 50% fan speed during stock load, we're getting around 1000 RPM on my particular ID cooling fans and they're completely inaudible. You will more likely have louder case fans or CPU fans drowning out the sound of a Morpheus 2 Vega under load at stock. And as you can see temperatures are still excellent including the hotspot. I did notice a rather big rise in hotspot temperatures in the last few days and I think it's from me handling this card a lot of times and from slightly moving the heatsink but a repaste and reseat should get me back to where I was in my initial video. I also made a silent undervolt overclock with the default fan profile and I have great results with a locked 1550MHz core clock, very cool temperatures and again no noise, inaudible, you actually need to be touching the fans to see if they're working. When undervolting always keep in mind that HBM voltage also acts as a floor voltage for vCore so setting vCore to for example 950mV and HBM to 1050mV will ensure vCore never actually reaches that 950mV setting in this particular case. Of course all results here greatly depend on the fans that you use, there are fans that can push more air than what I'm using here and still be quieter like Noctua's and other quality fans. I'm actually really surprised at the results I got with these high static pressure fans, I mean making them quieter and have decent airflow is not an easy task with these fans so higher quality ones should definitely perform even better. And this is a locked 1610MHz profile with around 200rpm more on the fans. At this noise level it definitely makes it so the hum the fans emit is distinguishable but it's as quiet as I'm really expecting AIB cards will ever be for this model of GPU. 
And lastly, as a still quiet for my years but high performance profile, I pushed 1630 MHz locked on the core, still undervolted but increased the fan speed even further, with noise still below stock blower for sure. The only test that drops my clocks to 1600 MHz locked is superposition. But this undervolt overclock and fan profile is a really strong one in the sense that I got very steady core clocks with it even when compared to this profile for example which has higher but not that stable clocks in extremely demanding tests like superposition. Check out this difference in scores between a lower clocked and a higher clocked profile. I'm getting quite a bump in points by not being greedy with the core clocks here. So now that I've had even more time with this cooler, I honestly can't recommend this combo enough if you can get past the size of this Vega sandwich. I'm expecting quality AIB cards will be around $30 to $50 more expensive than reference, which is around what this heatsink costs. With the Morpheus 2, you have the added bonus of keeping it and using it for other cards in the future. I mentioned this in the initial review as well. I fully don't expect to have such great temperatures and noise from any air-cooled AIB card, so this is why I'm calling this build the ultimate aftermarket RX Vega that you can have in your PC at this time. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for some really nice upcoming content on stuff I've actually never really tried before. Until next time, don't forget to check out my Twitter page and you can support this channel by subscribing and checking out my Patreon page as well. See you next time everybody, bye bye.